Hey guys, um, thank you for having me here. Um, thank you for the great work that you, are do you guys are doing. You are doing great. Uh, this is my favorite uh, topic uh, for the day. Uh, blockchain, we are going to talk about blockchain. How has your experience been with blockchain so far? And when did you first hear about it? Um, so um, just to give you a, a bit of history, um, blockchain. So I've been in the blockchain space since um, three and a half or four years now. Um, so um, at the start, you know, I, I was just, I saw it just as a new technology like cloud computing or learning a new language like, I don't know, Node.js, JavaScript. But the more um, I, I went into it, the more um, I got like interested in the, so many aspects of blockchain. So there are so many things that even now um, I am like 100% 24-7 um, on blockchain topics, learning about blockchain. I feel that I don't know enough about blockchain. Yes, but it's, a, it's a very complicated su subject, uh, this blockchain. And uh, most people think uh, of blockchain, cryptocurrency, bitcoins. Do you have any other ex examples? I, I think you have, you, you're dealing with cryptocurrency currently. Um, correct. I mean, um, you can't dissociate um, blockchain and cryptocurrency. Um, they're not the same thing, but one without the other doesn't work well. Um, that said, um, when we talk about cryptocurrency, we need to talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum, the two biggest, I would say, blockchains and cryptocurrencies in terms of market value. Um, but they have a very specific aim or, or um, let's say, utility. Um, they act as one Bitcoin act as um, <clears throat> a financial on, uh, alternative uh, to fiat currency. And Ethereum is more of a utility token. But on the other hand, we have the blockchain technology. So the blockchain technology is something much more um, generic. You could apply that in many more use cases. For example, you could use smart contracts um, to implement things that um, new business model and things like that. that we are going to um, talk a lot about smart contracts um, in, in my presentation. Very promising very and very interesting. I will leave it to you. You can uh, start your presentation, yes. Good luck. Thank you. All the best. See you. Thank you. Thank you, and guys. And just to remind you guys, the audience, if you have any question, just leave it in the chat. After the session, we are going to take it uh, in a Q&A. All right. OK. Um, just to um, complete on that, um, I'll try to wrap this up. I look forward to the questions. So, uh, so let me start first. Um, I'll repeat my name. So I'm Suyash from Code Vegan Horizon Africa. Um, I'm really pleased to be here and thanks for the Developers Conference organizing team to give me this opportunity um, to talk about my favorite subject, which is blockchain. So today we will focus on blockchain governance see how blockchain governance can have a profound inf uh, effect on everything around us from the way we live to the way we interact imagine this that um, you could write code um, that could or help to control um, society or your company or even your country so when it's so fitting um, that the theme for this year is superheroes. Now, when we talk about superheroes, we usually think of, of these guys. Um, by the way, my favorite character is Hulk. Um, I like the way he gets angry and smashes everything that displeases him. So that's that's very comforting for me. Um, but if the real superhero of our time is someone like him, actually not one, but dozens, uh, hundreds, or even thousands of people like this person. The talk today will focus on blockchain governance, and we will see how the power of decentralization and smart contracts um, can create something unstoppable and powerful, which can be used to change the society. But first, we need to understand the basic concepts. So. Um, for this talk, um, I try to do something a bit innovative and a bit different um, in the sense that, um, so before starting with the concepts, I want to highlight this specific structure of the talk. So 
to show the practicality of what we are going to discuss today, um, I have set up the following system. So I have set up a smart contract on the Horizon Africa blockchain, um, which allows you to collectively determine the direction of this talk. So this talk is divided into several topics, uh, but you get to decide what topics I should talk about next. So basically, you are controlling the talk. Um, if you want to participate, re really easy. You just go to Google Play, uh, download the Horizon Africa app, and you can then vote on the next topics. Um, so just to give you um, an idea um, of what we are talking about, we have of the smart contracts here. We'll go into more details of the smart contract about the voting um, system. Okay, uh, which declares that I, um, as the presenter or as the speaker, will need to fill contracts. Tells me. So this is something very interesting, and we will see um, later how how you can create powerful systems um, in your country or in your company. Uh, use smart contracts and uh, which control the behavior or the interactions between people, organization, or different entities. So first, it's important to get the concepts right. Okay. Um, sorry. I already told about you the, um, the number of votes for the first topic to discuss. Okay, so you have the importance of governance model 16 verse, so that's number one. Okay, we'll start with this one then. Um, so, blockchain technology is decentralized in nature. Um, when we, then we talk about decentralization, meaning that there is no single entity in control. Um, take Bitcoin, for example, um, no one person, institution or company alone can actually decide, okay, they want to stop Bitcoin. Um, um, they, it's not that they want to stop using Bitcoin, they want to actually stop the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, so this is very difficult to, to achieve, I'm not saying possible. Um, the direction that the blockchain takes is also decentralized, but this poses a problem. How are you going to manage a blockchain? How are you going to manage a decentralized system? Because the control is decentralized. Decide which direction the blockchain needs to go. Um, it, um, if we need more decentralization, less decentralization, if we need to decide on the block size and things like that. So you need a collective will to be able to do something. And this is why governance is so important. And um, through the talk, you will see that a lot of the concepts which apply here also apply in real life. So um, we, we, often, we might often think that blockchain governance is a very niche system. We're talking about blockchains. However, uh, blockchain governance models um, can also be useful um, in, in, in to be used internally in companies or in, in countries actually to um, to make to create more democratic systems. Okay. So now let's go back to our app and see what's the next item. Direct governance. So yeah, that's it. So um, just just um, to tell you again, um, to control the flow of this presentation, you just go to Google Play, download the Horizon Africa app, set up your wallet, it's real quick, and then you can vote on the next um, item. So we already have people who voted um, earlier before the talk. Let's talk about direct governance. Um, so direct governance, as its name implies, where everyone takes decisions. Um, they take decisions collectively um, in their respective roles as developers or users or miners. Um, the fact that everyone has a say in the decisions make direct governance very transparent. Imagine this, that in your country, for the, let's say the government takes, everyone gets to vote on the decision. Okay, it's a very democratic system. So parts can actually control every aspect aspect of the system, they decide which direction the system takes. Um, as a result, there's a high level of accountability. Um, actually, everyone is accountable for the direction the system takes. 
It's like having a voting poll, a um, decision needs to be taken. Now, is very interesting and very transparent, but it does come with a lot of problems. Um, the high number of participants, it would be very difficult to reach consensus. Um, people have different views, different opinions. This, make it, this makes it very difficult for everyone to agree um, on a single direction. And there's a very well-known issue also um, where users um, acting independently and according to their self-interest, they, they kind of behave contrary to the common good. It's, um, it's called the um, strategy of the common. So it's a very well-known problem um, in situations like this. Um, and the third would say that uh, managing all these participants become um, a, a real issue and a real overhead. How are you going to manage so many people? How are you going to um, provide information to so many people? So it's very difficult to manage a high number, um, a large number of people in such um, a governance model, a direct governance model. So um, next topic, let's see. We talk about direct governance, let's see. So it's representative governance. Um, we'll just yeah. I'll just um, jump on that. Um, so representative governance is a system where you elect, uh, where you you have the opportunity to um, elect a few people or systems. Um, in some blockchain, um, blockchains we 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 can elect programs can like smart contracts to take decisions on your behalf, behalf. Um, decisions regarding new rules, um, new directions uh, of the blockchain system. Now, this is a very practical solution because it is efficient and easy to onboard users. Participants can freely choose their representative. Information sharing becomes easier because now you are sharing information with a few intent instead of a, of a large number of people. Um, Actually, when, when you uh, think about it, it's not very different from what we have, for example, our current democratic model in Mauritius and many other countries. Uh, management, of course, becomes much easier because we only need to manage a few people. Uh, but we all know um, of the different, um, I'd say, um, kinds of problems that these that systems like these uh, can introduce. Um, as we have seen time and time again, um, power corrupts. So it is very likely that representatives may work in the self-interest, disregarding the good of the masses. A real lack of accountability with, with systems like this. And with power at stake, you can be practically sure that elections to determine the representatives will be full of immoral and sometimes illegal practices. I mean, this is not something new. What's interesting is that um, things that we see in real life also apply to blockchain systems and things that apply to blockchain systems also apply to real life situations. Just um, to point out that um, blockchain is not a technology that um, sits out there in the cloud. Far from that. It um, it practically determines interactions between people. Interaction when you're talking about Bitcoin, it's, it's interactions between miners, between users, between developers. And um, how to manage all these interactions is via this different governance model. So, next item <clears throat> um, who does it apply to? Um, okay, still in order. Um, so, yeah, I, I just mentioned um, the different, um, different parties that um, governance applies to. Of course, we have developers. Um, you know, in, in blockchain systems, developers wield a lot of power in deciding the direction a blockchain takes, um, primarily because they are the ones who create um, the software um, and maintain the software. This is why I feel a bit powerful, like a superhero when, when we talk about it, because I'm developing that technology, so um, I have a lot of say. However, um, they don't uh, they don't build all the power, okay? Um, the power is decentralized. Again, 
blockchain decentralized, um, all the aspects of it are, are, are a bit decentralized. Next, we have the miners or the validators of the blockchain. Um, so they are the ones who invest <clears throat> electricity, uh, money, or stake to ensure the security and integrity of the system. So basically, if you remove the miners, there are no blockchains. Okay, they are the ones which um, hold the system up. They are the ones um, who ensure the security of the system. Um, in certain blockchains, you have also have token holders who have the ability and power to take certain decisions uh, by means of voting through the use of the holdings in terms of native or custom tokens. And in some cases, you also have a managing organization. Let's take Facebook, for example, Facebook's Libra. Um, it's a consortium of different companies um, and organizations which collectively decide on the direction of blockchain, the blockchain, the Libra blockchain will take. Um, so we do have these kinds of um, setup um, taking place to manage um, blockchains. Now, in the case of Facebook, it's quite easy to see who the real boss is. I mean, um, Facebook is long term. So at the end of the day, we expect Facebook to maintain control over, um, over the system. Um, at that stage, it wouldn't really be called a blockchain. So next item is an next item on the, the topic is on-chain governance. Let's see. So yeah, on-chain governance. Okay. <clears throat> oh, so, sorry, that's off-chain. So let's go to on-chain governance. So um on-chain governance is where it becomes interesting. Um, we'll talk about this on jump right into the code and show uh, what we have done enough of the um, conceptual stuff. So uh, on-chain governance um, aspect of blockchains is where it becomes very interesting. Imagine that you could laws, real laws, as defined in our constitution via smart contracts. Imagine if you could define a system where people in charge are not actually in charge. They are just executives of the decisions taken by everyone. Um, On-chain governance actually allows that with the use of rules and voting mechanisms which are enforced by a blockchain-based system. So let's jump right into, um, let's say, a traditional system okay so you have this here all right um you have um the blockchain running here so these are two nodes that i have set up on the horizon of um and the smart contracts the smart contract is hosted on uh, on this uh, on the horizon africa blockchain and is being managed by these nodes okay and you also talk about all the um, technical aspects of it, and then we'll go on into the non-technical. Maybe to, to um, interact with a smart contract, you have a mobile application like this one. Okay, so you have everything right there to uh, be able to uh, vote and to make decisions. Now, that's one thing to make decisions decisions to make a system which allow you which allows you to make decisions but it's all online so how do you line um, results and apply it to the real world so that's where um, the legal aspect of it comes into place so basically what could happen is that is that someone could do a contract and say that hey look I am uh, in charge of um, this institution, or maybe I am in charge of this, this um, ministry, but um, I'm mandated, um, I made a contract that I will follow all the wishes um, which this smart contract tells me to do. So basically, I'm just executing in real life what this smart contract is telling us. Now, this is a very simple example. This is about the, the voting um, about the topics, and it's a very um, smart 
contract, not complex. So, but it does show you what could happen. Tomorrow, you could imagine a system where um, you could elect someone um, like um, a shareholder in a company, sorry, not a shareholder, but a director or someone in charge, the CEO of a company. But the CEO is managed by um, the people working below him, um, a smart contract. So um, the smart contract is immutable. So whatever you push on that, um, you have uh, an example of, uh, you have an aspect of the truth that you want to implement. So things like that could be extended not only within a company, but even within a country. So you could have a, uh, a blockchain-based government where uh, the government, the people in the government, they act as executives to what we um, decide via smart contracts. So it can be as simple or as complex as we want. So let's just go um, a bit into the, the source code. I just increase the size a bit more um, um, of the structure of a smart contract. So um, similar to some of the languages like Java or, or JavaScript. So um, you have the contract, so you define the contract, um, you define a structure, okay? That's a very specific type, type of, um, um, a very specific type that can be used in a smart contract. Uh, you have things that's like string and you have something called address. This is um, something very specific to blockchains. Um, every user, every wallet, every smart contract ha need, need to have, um, needs to have an address. Of course, you have um, arrays, an array of topics. You have the, the usual public where you say that, okay, the owner is the sender. <clears throat> so basically, we'll see um, where this is used. So basically, you are the owner of this um, smart contract to the one who created the smart contract. And you just assign a name, um, whatever you want. And you could you can add topics now you will see that when you add topics you add the title um there is a require so the require here is very important in the sense that um it to the system okay not everyone can add it's only the owner of the smart contract who can add a topic um a topic um so um if this is true then we go to the next line as it um, error handling in, in blockchain smart contracts are a bit different, um, but this is a very simple example, so we'll just go <clears throat> with this one. So you have the topics here where you push and in the array and okay, we have done it. And by default, the number of votes is zero. Um, next, you have the function called add vote. Um, so add vote, um, this is where you specify, okay, um, where you increment the number of votes for a specific topic. Um, so you will see that in the add vote, there's no require, okay? This means that anyone can actually vote. Um, so you just, as I mentioned earlier, you just go download the app, um, you click on it, and it's done. Okay, confirm, and it's done. Um, and you have all, you also have a function remove all topics again. Um, we require that it's the sender, um, it's the owner of the smart contract uh, who can um, remove all the topics. And we have a like a getter getter function called get name. So um, this is the structure contract. Um, and like a tra traditional contract, everyone basically knows um, how to set up a traditional contract. So this is where um, it's so interesting. Like um, you can actually use smart contracts, digital cloud-based smart contracts, and realize to create a link between themselves and work together. So this is really powerful. You can actually change a lot of things uh, with, uh, with, this, um, with this structure. Um, yeah, so on-chain governance. So let's go to the next item. Now it's off-chain governance. So often we'll return back on this one. Off-chain governance. Now, um, <clears throat> the off-chain governance um, 
it's a very traditional governance system. It's it's primarily used by Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, the governance model um, promotes a balance um, like between different parties, like developers and miners. Um, and there are different things that can govern the behavior of the participants. For, for instance, um, when we talk about, um, for example, Bitcoin, sorry, what motivates um, miners are their rewards, because what miners do is they mine Bitcoin, and, and through the action of mining, what they are doing is they are increasing the security of the system, and how they are paid back is in terms of um, new Bitcoin. So, um, so rewarding miners become one aspect of um, off-chain governance, of the incentives for uh, off-chain governance. Um, maybe privacy and decentralization is what motivates um, what motivate motivate developers. Um, and maybe ease of use is what motivates users. So you have these different um, aspects of blockchains, of off-chain governance, which need to be balanced. Um, no one, um, for example, in the Bitcoin community, um, developers cannot say that, okay, are we going into this specific direction? What if the miners do not um, go in that direction? Because they see that, okay, uh, <clears throat> it affects their revenue. Or what if users find what the developers have developed to be too complex? Um, they won't use it. So basically, there needs to be a balance between all the different um, participants in the system. So um, so when all these different factors come into play, um, it is sometimes very difficult to manage. And you can actually see that um, on, uh, on, on, on blockchains like Bitcoin. For example, um, the development on Bitcoin um, although, um, in my opinion, it's, it's really fast, it's going really fast, you have new technologies everywhere um, pertaining to the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, you can see that Bitcoin moves very slowly. So um, it's both intentional and, uh, and, and, and not really intentional in the sense that it's intentional in the fact, based on the fact that um, Blockchain is very stable in what it does. It's very good in what it does. So um, making small incremental changes, make sure that we do not break anything. OK, um, now um, it's not intention, intentional in the sense that there are so many um, different parties um, in a Bitcoin, uh, in the Bitcoin blockchain that it's very difficult to manage the balance between them. So let's see the next. So um, I think we got over here elements of blockchain. On chain, we talk about these elements of blockchain governance. <clears throat> so this is, these are some of the points that um, we talked earlier. Um, some of the most important elements of the block of blockchain governance. So. These are elements uh, that we have covered in other topics. Um, to take decisions, um, it is important that to reach a consensus. Um, that's the minimum you need. Um, you cannot have a system where um, you have so many, so many diverging views that you cannot come to a consensus. What happens is that um, the system won't move, won't move, and it happens. Um, it's also applicable to real life. You cannot have a system where you have so many decision makers that at the end, um, no one can actually take the decision. So next you have incentives. We talked about that a bit earlier. Um, now, this is tricky um, because, as I mentioned earlier, different people have different incentives. And it is important to find a balance um, for all of them. Um, when you have such complex systems, it's, in, it's become a challenge. It becomes a challenge to be able to share information to everyone. Um, imagine if we had a system where everyone in Mauritius um, could vote on all the decisions that the government takes uh, via smart contracts or any or any other um, I mean, um, system. This would mean that um, we need a system to to share the information to make sure that everyone has the same information. Now, um, a lot of problems can come into into play, like fake news. Um, like people don't have access to the information, so they, they take uninformed decisions. So information becomes a really a critical point in, in what we are discussing. 
And finally, finally, the structure of the managing com committee also becomes something which uh, needs a lot of, of consideration. Um, for example, I, I mentioned Facebook earlier, um, so they set up a consortium, <clears throat> but you can see in the long run who is going to uh, manage um, the blockchain. And when you have a single entity managing a blockchain, then that becomes a problem. So on one hand, you have a decentralized governance model, but on the other hand, you have a centralized governance model like, like Facebook, uh, Libra, and which becomes um, problematic because, um, as I also earlier, if you want to stop Bitcoin, you can't stop Bitcoin, okay? But if you want to stop Libra, you can do that. A government can say, hey, Facebook, we need you to stop your miners, you need to stop your nodes right now or in the next 24 hours. And Facebook will need to comply. And this, um, maybe they are creating a blockchain, but it's a very centralized blockchain. So it's very easy to stop that. And this, this actually defeats the purpose um, of, of actually using a blockchain. So um, let us go back to the top of the topics, um, just to see if there are any new votes, no new votes, that's fine. So, um, <clears throat> so before before finishing, um, um, I wanted to point out that where um, smart contracts can be used. So we have um, blockchain is a very complex topic. So you have things like miners, you have cryptocurrencies, you have blockchain, you have blockchain governance models, blockchain governance. Um, you have even the technical stuff, like you're talking about cryptography, public private key cryptography, um, you're talking about merger trees. So there are so many things that um, that form part of the blockchain, I would say, um, technology, the blockchain ecosystem. But what's interesting is that um, we can um, limit and try to see things differently. We don't need to understand all the complexities of blockchain um, to be able to up with use cases, what we need to understand are the concepts or the ideas behind blockchain, why a blockchain is decentralized, um, and there can be different levels of, of decentralization in a blockchain, and how we can use that to make real change. Um, <clears throat> like in the future, as I mentioned earlier, it's not, uh, it's not difficult to imagine a system where we could have people um, bound by a legal contract and the legal contract is bound um, to a um, smart contract. And the smart contract is controlled by different people, okay, different different um, developers on one hand, but also users of the system. So um, this creates like kinds of powerful um, systems which can, which, can, which can actually bring a lot of change in what we are doing. Sorry about the. Uh, um, the noise. Um, <clears throat> so I'll just go on. So, um, so I was saying that okay, these things like this um, can be very, very powerful indeed. Um, um, so yeah, thank you for being, um, time to watch this. Um, you feel me on my email, suyash at horizonafrica.io. Uh, feel free to reach to me um, on LinkedIn. Uh, we also have a Facebook group, a blockchain merge, where we share a lot of stuff about blockchain and cryptocurrencies, trying to just try to educate in technology. So feel free um, to reach out and, and, and ask any questions, and, and I'll be free to take any questions that, that I have uh, just, uh, just now. Thank you very much, Yash. It was very informative about the blockchain uh, ecosystem. Thank you so much and have a nice day. Oh.